Hi, this is Cindy Royal again, back with you talking about HTML for the web design class. And now we're going to move on to text formatting, images, and links. So I still have my Text Wrangler HTML page up, and I added some additional content to it so you could get a sense of what a page with more content would look like. Um, but you will notice that in Text Wrangler, by default, the text doesn't wrap within the window. But we can fix that if you go under View, Text Display, and you choose Soft Wrap Text and make sure the At Window Width is checked. If it's At Page Guide, change that to At Window Width. And now you can see that I have headings, paragraphs with content in it, and I want to put actually a paragraph tag around the second paragraph and close this one. So you can see that we'll have two paragraphs within the page under the uh, Welcome to My Website. And then we actually have content under Work, under Music, and under Outdoors. So let me save this. And the wrapping that we did actually didn't affect anything on the HTML page that will show in the browser. It just affects how it looks in Text Wrangler. You can see if I stretch the browser window, the text wraps associated with that. So you can see that I have a lot more text here, and you can see how that played out. Uh, so now this is a pretty boring web page. It just has text on it, and it's black and white. So we want to add some visual interest. So the first thing I want to add is an image. And if we look in the folder, my website folder that has index.html, I've also dragged a, a picture of myself in here. And so you can do the same thing. You can get a picture that you have on your computer. Maybe you can email one uh, to yourself from your phone. Or you can uh, get it from a website by doing a control click and then saving it. Just make sure you save it in the same folder as your HTML page. Um, so the HTML to insert an image, the tag is IMG. Now we're going to start talking about attributes. So far we've had tags that didn't require anything but the element itself. But some tags need attributes to help describe what the tag will be doing. In this case, for image, we need to know what the source of that image is. What is the file name? Where does it exist? So the attribute is source, SRC. It's uh, uh, abbreviated. And then we have to say equals, and then we want to put the value of what the source is, and we put that in quotation marks. So the value of source for the image tag, in this case, is the name of my file, that is my picture, cindy.jpg. And we would normally close it out like this, but because image doesn't really surround anything, it's called a standalone tag. And remember when we said that every tag you open, you must close. So there's a convention in HTML that allows you to close standalone tags. So it's just something you have to remember. This isn't surrounding anything. And we put the slash inside of it just so we can make sure that we um, support that convention of closing every tag that we open. There's only a few tags like this, and we'll discuss them. So let's save this page and come back and refresh. And we now see our image on the page. Um, maybe we want the image to be a little bit smaller. So there's an attribute for image for width. And if we just put in width, it will constrain to the height. So it's fine to just put one of these in. And also notice that I have two attributes now. I have the source equals cindy.jpg and width equals 100. That's in pixels. So these attribute equal value pairs, you can use as many of them as the tag actually supports. So if I save this and refresh, the picture's much smaller. And sometimes I like to align the picture, and I actually would rather put it inside a paragraph. An image standing by itself doesn't really have much control. So I'm going to cut this and actually put the image at the beginning of the paragraph. And then I want to align it because in the paragraph, that image actually, in terms of the browser, it looks at it like it's text. And it basically just puts the image in line with the text. It's just like a big piece of text. But we want to align it so that it will wrap. So I'm going to say align equal left so that the image will go to the left of the paragraph. And let's see what happens when I do that. So this is better. We've got the image 
wrapped within the paragraph, and this particular paragraph at this size has enough text to wrap all the way around it. That's one thing you want to keep in mind is that uh, does your text wrap all the way around your image or does it leave a um, strange effect with the image getting cut off without having enough text to go all the way around it. But we'll worry about that kind of uh, thing later when we talk more about design. So that's it. That's how you put an image into your page with the IMG tag. One more thing I want to mention is that you notice when I changed the width of the image, I made it smaller than its original size. And be sure you only make it smaller when you're using this method. You can't make the image larger because it will pixelate the image. You're limited to the original quality. The next thing we want to talk about is links because while this page now has some visual interest in it, it's not very hyper, as in hyper, like in hypertext markup language. Um, this is something that you can do on the web. You can make links to other pages in your site or to other pages on the web. And I've got a lot of opportunities to do that in here. I have in here, one of the very first things I say here is that I got my PhD at the University of Texas at Austin. So if I want to make a link to the University of Texas, I say a href equal, and then I would put in the URL for the University of Texas, utexasstudy.edu, and my attribute is href equals the value, that's the URL for the site, utexasstudy.edu, and you can also use the www if you want. And then I want to make sure I close this at the end of the word that I want to have the hyperlink, that I want the underline to stop. So I'm going to say slash a here, and that means only the words the University of Texas at Austin will be underlined and will act as a link. Everything else after that will be stopped. Let's save it and refresh. And now we see a blue underline here, and when I click on it, it should go to the University of Texas's website, and it does. But one thing I don't really like about that is this is my website, and when I click on the University of Texas, it goes to that page, but I may spend some time here on this page clicking on these different links and lose my original site. So what I like to do is when I have somebody clicking on a link that takes them out of my site, I like to have it open in a new tab or window. And you've probably seen that when you've been working on the web. The way to do that is another attribute which assigns the target. In this case, the target equals underscore blank. That's the convention for saying open in a new window. And you just have to make sure you close any quotation marks that you open for any of these attributes. And if we refresh this page now, and click on the link, it should open in a new tab. And it does, and then we can easily close that tab to get back to uh, my own page. So we can set up a lot of these different um, links anywhere we want in the page. And down here I talk about teaching at Texas State University, so let's go ahead and put another A for anchor, href equal, and then we'll put the URL for Texas State, txstate.edu, and we also do target equal underscore blank for this one. And then we want that link to stop at the end of the words Texas State University. And also notice that I use the HTTP colon slash slash here. These are for links that are going out to the web on other people's websites. That has to be there for it to work for links on other websites, because if you don't include that, the browser thinks that you're trying to find a page on your own site. This will make sense later. So I'm going to refresh this. And now we also have the link for Texas State University that opens in its own window. And it goes to the Texas State homepage. The last thing I want to be able to do is to change the color of the links, the color of the text, and the color of the background. We'll have more advanced ways to do that later. But to change that in HTML, you can add some attributes to the body tag. So to change the background color, the attribute is BG color, and we can use any number of colors or color codes. And if you look up HTML color codes, you'll see many websites that have these six digit color codes that let you get shades. 
but many colors also work as well. So for example, if we just put blue in here and we save this and we come over and refresh the page, we have a pretty ugly page. It's got a dark blue background with black text, very, very difficult to read. So let's try to pick something that's a little easier to read, better for the users. We'll say beige and we'll refresh that page. And now we have a beige background. And if we wanted to change the color of our text, the attribute is text. And let's say we want the text to now be blue. This is not necessarily a design that we would like or wish. Um, and that would make the text blue. I really like the text to be black. So we're going to leave it the default of black. Um, you can also change the colors of the links. The link attribute changes the color of the link before it was clicked on. So we can change it from the default that's blue to another color. So let's say we want these links to be red, perhaps. And then you can also change the color of the link for when it's visited. So we'll say the vlink equals, and when it's visited, we'll make it green. So let's save those, and we'll refresh our page. And now we have the beige background, the black text. We've already clicked on these links, and so that's why they're green. If we added a new link that was um, not clicked on yet, it would be red, and that's how you get that effect. When we introduce CSS later, you'll also be able to add a hover effect to your links. Also notice that the body tag opens and closes at the end of the page before the closing HTML tag. We don't use the body tag multiple times. We don't have to close it again up here. We are adding the attributes within the opening body tag. And that's it. That is how we do text formatting, images, and links. In my next video, I will talk about creating lists and tables on your web page.